This could be huge. The world's most formidable ransomware gang has hacked the Federal Reserve and stolen 33 terabytes worth of data, or so they claim. Also in your hacking news roundup, Discord emoji malware is targeting governments and two people have been arrested for SMS blasting. But first, the infamous ransomware gang Lockbit have posted to their dark web site claiming to have hacked America's Federal Reserve. The dump supposedly contains 33 terabytes of juicy banking information containing Americans' banking secrets. What that really means? Well, your guess is as good as mine, because Lockbit hasn't released any sample documents. But they have said they're not too happy with how the ransom negotiation is going, telling the feds, you better hire another negotiator within 48 hours and fire this clinical idiot who values Americans' bank secrecy at $50,000. Lockbit has only given the feds till tonight to pay a ransom. But that's assuming any of this is even true. VX Underground puts it best when they said Lockbit could have just hacked the Federal Reserve's coffee machine and then inflated this achievement into we hacked the Federal Reserve itself, lying by mission by leaving out that important detail. And Lockbit does have a history of manipulating the facts around their data breaches. A few months back, they claimed to have hacked Fulton County in Georgia, and this did totally happen. It caused widespread issues with the county systems being down for over a month. But then Lockbit claims that within the files they stole were a bunch of interesting court documents regarding the ongoing Trump case, which could affect the upcoming US election. But then, when the countdown timer to the release of the files hit zero, Logbit didn't release any of those files at all, and instead falsely claims that the county had paid a ransom, and that therefore those Trump files would never see the light of day, when in reality those documents probably never even existed in the first place. This kind of achievement inflation is all too common amongst cyber bad guys. You might remember a few months back when a ransomware gang claimed to have successfully compromised all of Sony's systems, causing an absolute meltdown in the mainstream media, only for the actual leak to just be a few files that were just nothing of interest. The benefit of achievement inflation is that it means cyber bad guys get a ton of attention, which in of itself is something they absolutely crave, but it also likely results in a slurry of new affiliates wanting to join their ransomware group. But if this breach is anywhere near as bad as Lockbit claims, then it could well be the worst financial hack of all time. And either way, we won't have long to find out. Lockbit's deadline only has a few hours left on the clock. So if you're watching this video a day or so after it's gone live, scroll down and see my pinned comment for an update. Researchers have discovered malware which comes with an odd twist. It's controlled using emojis. This is coming from researchers over at Veloxity. They're calling the malware Disco Emoji. It's distributed via phishing emails and targets Linux PCs, which is a rare combo. I mean, not many people use Linux desktops as a daily driver, suggesting that this campaign is highly targeted. The researchers think that this is an espionage operation targeting the Indian government, which is known for having their own custom Linux distro called Boss Linux. Linux. The attack commences with spear phishing emails which deliver a zip archive containing an ELF file. ELF files are kind of the Linux equivalent of EXE files. Upon opening the file, a decoy PDF is displayed to the victim, which is just some Indian government document. The real fun though happens in the background, where Disco Emoji malware is downloaded and dropped in the user's home directory. This malware is a modified version of the public project Discord C2, which gains the name Disco Emoji because, well, it uses emojis, is written in Golang, and uses utilizes Discord. Malware using Discord is really pretty common, and all it really means is that instead of the malware connecting to some VPS in, say, Kazakhstan, which the hackers use as a base of operation to control infections, the malware instead connects to a Discord server. This makes for a pretty easy way to control victims, and has the added bonus that encrypted Discord traffic is much more likely to blend in with regular legitimate traffic. When Disco Emoji infects a new victim, a new channel is created on the attacker's server. Here, the attackers can control that individual victim by sending certain commands. But what makes this malware different is that those commands are all emojis. If the hackers send a running man emoji, it means they want to execute a certain command on the victim device. A camera emoji takes a screenshot and returns it to the attackers. Hand emojis are reserved for uploading and downloading certain files. And a skull emoji is used to kill the malware on the victim's computer. Whilst a command is being processed, the victim reacts with a clock emoji, and once the command has been executed, that switches to a checkmark emoji. There doesn't really seem to be any obvious benefit to using emojis to send commands. If anything, I would have thought it makes things a little more complicated and cumbersome, but hey, I'm sure the threat group had a good laugh over it. But who is that threat group? For various reasons, Veloxity thinks it's a Pakistan-based threat actor who they've given the very unremarkable name UTA0137. 
Two people have been arrested in the UK for operating a smishing campaign using what police have described as a janky homemade mobile antenna. It works like this. Cyber bad guys drive around a city with illegal networking equipment stuffed in the passenger seat's footwell, which spams thousands of phishing text messages to nearby phones. Whether it's a fake refund scam or some other flavor of spam, these setups can pump out hundreds of text messages per minute. And this is by no means a new problem. It's very common in Asia, but it's a growing problem in the West. With this case in particular, particular, apparently the first of its kind in the UK. But how does this really work? Well, first and foremost, these SMS blaster base stations easily overpower the signal of legitimate cell towers. But how they work on a more technical level varies quite a bit. But generally speaking, it involves impersonating a particular carrier by mimicking certain identifiers, effectively disguising themselves as part of the legitimate cell carrier's network. But then SMS blasting equipment hits a snag, because typically 4G and 5G technologies require the phone and network to authenticate themselves to each other, proving legitimacy. But in 2G, that generally isn't the case. So SMS blasters often work by downgrading to a legacy technology in order to establish a connection with a victim device so they can send those SMS messages. Whilst this is a very technical process, luckily for the cyber bad guys, there are noob friendly tools out there which make this super simple. I mean, finding this kind of equipment online is as easy as a Google search. This website in particular claims to sell devices which send more than 50,000 messages per hour, having a range of up to five kilometers and can easily be installed in a car. A promotional video shows just how easy these things are to operate. I mean, they're controlled with an app. All you need to do is to type in your message, then moments later, the message is received on nearby phones. I'm not certain these websites are illegal operations in of themselves. I'm sure there are genuine uses for these things. But as you'd expect, these websites have a disclaimer which puts complete onus on the buyer in terms of legal problems when you're trying to import them. And there doesn't seem to be anything preventing any random person from just buying one. And so there's been a few instances of these things being used in the wild. One case that caught my eye involved French police mistaking an SMS blasting setup for a bomb. And so they actually ended up carrying out a controlled explosion. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one.